Ethereum Classic shakes up the markets as it reaches the top 10 of coin market cap. This is Juan Gal with Coin Olympics, and uh, Ethereum Classic is becoming a legitimate thing. Uh, remember, remember the last video that I made about how I said that Ethereum, the Ethereum fork had gone fairly well? Well, up to that point, it had, and it's still on their side. Things seem to be working fine, except that a group of the people that opposed the hard fork decided that, you know what? We don't agree with it. We're going to maintain the Ethereum Classic fork, and we're going to start mining it and trading it and keeping it alive, and they have. It is ofi practically official that Ethereum Classic is the thing. Uh, Poloniex, one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges in the United States, um, has integrated in the platform, so you can go in there and buy and trade Ethereum Classic. Um, BitSquare, another decentralized trading platform, added it a couple of days ago. And the F2 pool, one of the biggest uh, cryptocurrency mining pools, has announced that they're working on allowing their members to mine Ethereum Classic. So it, it's basically official. And in this space, whatever makes money, people move to. And so it's, it's likely that other exchanges uh, will start accepting it. Bittrex has said that they're working on adding Ethereum Classic. And likely other mining pools will also get in the game. Um, so this is a real thing. Ethereum Classic is a real thing. And now Ethereum has some uh, serious competition with some very principled and, and clearly tech-savvy people that are, um, that are trying to maintain the, the original ethos of Ethereum as an immutable blockchain alive. Of course, uh, most pro-forkers will, well, at least not most, but some of the key developers of Ethereum, uh, the forked version, are saying that this is basically a one-time thing and that, it, that it's only because of a variety of reasons, uh, the DAO, etc. But uh, that has clearly shaken up trust in Ethereum's blockchain and at least some people are moving to Ethereum Classic. Right now, Ethereum Classic is trading by one US dollar and as soon as Poloniex accepted it, Ethereum's price, which was roughly at around, had, had risen from about $11 to about 1260 or so, fell and it's already it's back down to a sort of critical juncture that it was at about at, at about eleven dollars so this already has affected prices and uh, there's a lot of movement going on a lot of talk going on in the forums and uh, slack and uh, telegram it's uh, very intense right now and it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on so very interesting situation now there's a big controversy around the legitimacy of either blockchain and I think this is a really a misunderstanding of what blockchains are blockchains aren't governments okay blockchains aren't democracies where everybody has to comply with the majority vote okay that's only happens in, in governments where they can force people to comply blockchains are decentralized and if they really are decentralized you will you can expect to see minority dissenting voices to say you know what fuck this we're gonna go with our own blockchain and that's what's happening here and this is essentially living up to the essence of what the DAO really was the DAO I, what I liked about it before the whole scandal and the whole um, theft or theft right the essence of the DAO was the dissenting voices dissenting investors who didn't agree with a particular move by the general pool of this sort of um, trading fund they could say, you know what, I'm going to take my, my, my dividends so far and I'm going to move my funds to a new smaller DAO and continue down my own path and not follow the bigger chain. Well, this is exactly what's happening but at a protocol level, level with Ethereum and this is what should happen. This is the great thing about decentralized networks and consensus is that if you don't agree with the general consensus, you can take it and take the what, the code that you have, the open source software, the blockchain, and continue your own way. Now, whether it'll be con it'll continue to stay up, and whether it'll stay successful, and whether actual development will stay on it, whether enough momentum will keep Ethereum Classic alive, that's yet to be decided. The developers are definitely saying that they intend to keep Ethereum Classic as compatible with Ethereum. Um, as possible and they will continue to update Ethereum Classic um, in parallel to Ethereum with the exceptions that may exist between the you know given the, the fork that just happened and the DAO contract 
and other decisions that Ethereum Classic disagrees with. So this is effectively a fork. This is basically the, li the Litecoin of Bitcoin, except I don't know the history of Litecoin versus Bitcoin, but this is a, a new kind of Ethereum, and a, an Ethereum that most importantly has compatibility with uh, most mainstream Ethereum wallets. So that is a key part of this problem, and this is very analogous to the Bitcoin block size debate controversy. And the, the reason for that, and this is actually starting to rouse up sort of tensions from the Bitcoin uh, block size debate again, because this is essentially what was happening in Bitcoin. Bitcoin Classic and Bitcoin XT wanted to take a majority control of the Ethereum network, which meant the wallets and the and the exchanges and the major service providers. Okay, if you create a new altcoin, nobody supports it. But if you take over an already established cryptocurrency, you can take over its user base and its uh, transaction network and its wallet services. Right. So this is basically what's happening with Ethereum. And um, right now, anybody that was holding Ethereum on either Polonex or on their own cl uh, private clients. Um, or the centralized sort of locally hosted clients have a co have also that many Ethereum, but in Ethereum Classic. However, getting moving your Ethereum Classic right now is uh, kind of risky because there's something called a relay attack, which uh, complicates things. Now, the relay attack is very interesting because what essentially has happened is that the Ethereum fork went this way, and a bunch of clients decided to only go with the fork and reject. The, the Ethereum Classic uh, transa or transactions or clients. Basically, they don't communicate. And then the Ethereum Classic people just went this way and their clients say, no, we're not going to talk to the Ethereum fork. It's like they got divorced, right? Well, there's a bunch of Ethereum nodes that are, by some estimates, about 40% of them are just sitting here and they're like, I don't know, or they haven't updated or they're not paying attention, but they're still running. And so transactions from Ethereum Classic will go through these nodes and enter Ethereum forked. And Ethereum forked transactions will do the same thing. So there's a channel of communication between the two networks, and because they function basically the same, they're the same coin, and there was no change in the nouns of the Ethereum uh, blockchain, then these two blockchains can basically communicate. And this is a sort of rough overview, right? It's still not clear exactly what's going on, at least to me. But uh, this is basically what I understand and what I've talked to some people about that's actually happening. So what this relay, relay attack is, is basically that if you send a transaction on Ethereum Classic or Ethereum Forked, that transaction will move your co coins on the other, right? You move Ethereum Classic, your Ethereum Fork mo coins will also move. And uh, of course, that's a problem if you're buying anything or you're trading with somebody, you're actually sending them both coins instead of just one, right? So the solution to that is you have to go through a special process through a special smart contract and separate your coins and send the Ethereum forked ones to one address and the Ethereum Classic ones to another address and basically separate the coins. And that, that is not a simple process. So um, as soon as I figure out a great way to do this, I will send it to you. If you had coins in Polonex, uh, then your coins have already been split for you. And uh, it'll probably be the same in any other exchange that you held your coins to. On If you held your, your coins in a private wallet in your own computer, you'll have to figure out you have to go through one of these processes, right? So there's a few ways to do it, but none of them simple enough for me to kind of show you a quick tutorial, right? So uh, as soon as some, I come up with something like that, I'll let you know. And um, that's basically what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, pretty crazy and um, fascinating as always. So. I'll keep you, uh, I'll stay tuned, and uh, if anything a, anything else major happens, uh, you can expect to have a video here at Coin Olympics. Um, thanks for watching, and you have an awesome day.